In this video, we're going to talk about how to take one polynomial and divide it by another polynomial. Now, the, the method that we use to do this is called polynomial long division. And if that word sounds familiar, it probably is because this is the same or similar type of long division that we learned some time ago when we learned how to take one number and divide it by another number using long division. It just has to be adapted a little bit to do it with polynomials. So if you bear with me for just a minute, I think it'll be pretty beneficial to actually remind ourselves of just how we do this regular long division with numbers because we use some of the same words when we do polynomial long division and the process is even pretty similar. So just bear with me for just a minute. Uh, let's say we were going to take 71 and divide it by 4. Well then, as you well know, what we would do is we'd write 71 and then we do our long division symbol and then we would put a 4 on the outside and then we would uh, go through this process where we'd say what number, uh, what's the largest multiple of 4 that you could have that doesn't exceed 7 and that the answer would be 1 because 4 times 2 it would be 8 which is larger than 7. but once you write 1 up here above on the top of the division symbol, we'll take 1 times 4 and put our product here. Then we'll subtract these two quantities and we'll get a 3. And then we'll bring down the next number and we'll have 31 and we'll play the game again. We'll say what times 4 gets you as close as you can get to 31 without going over 31. And the answer is 7. And then we'll take 7 times 4 we'll get a product of 28 we'll subtract these and we'll get 3 and we're gonna stop right there because we're not gonna continue on uh, because there's there's no more <clears throat> digits after the 1 and yes I know we could put a point zero and turn this into a decimal that's not what I'm looking to do here um, I can stop because 3 is less than 4 is less than my divisor and 4 won't even go into 3 not even one time so we're gonna stop right there and uh, and so our answer is roughly 17 that's more or less our, our answer except for the fact that we have a remainder of 3 so really it's 17 and 3 remaining out of 4 so you might remember some time ago this is how we turned improper fractions into mixed numbers as we did long division and that sort of thing. Well, this is similar to the idea of what we're going to do with polynomial long division. Uh, I can even keep some of the same vocabulary. If you remember the words that we use for uh, doing long division, the little guy who's being divided into the other number, this is called the divisor. Remember that because we're going to use the same word in just a minute. Uh, 71, the larger number in the numerator that we're dividing 4 into, is called the dividend. The 17, which is more or less your answer, or the majority of your answer for dividing 4 into seven, 71, is called the quotient. And the leftover part that did not go evenly into 71, this 3 right here, is called the remainder. Okay, so just keep those in mind uh, as we move forward. Now we're going to do something similar. If you have one polynomial divided by another, you're going to set it up in a similar way with the same looking division symbol. The divisor goes on the outside, the uh, dividend goes under the division symbol, you get a quotient, you get all these sor sorts of things. And rather than write down a bunch of notes, this is usually best explained just by walking through an example. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, before we do our example though, just two quick notes. And if these don't make perfectly good sense right now, don't worry about it. They'll make sense once we get into our example. The dividend, the dividend only, but the dividend has to have placeholders if it has any missing terms. For example, if you have a degree 5 polynomial, then you need to see the degree 5 term, the x to the 5th term, and the x to the fourth, and x to the third, and squared, and the x term, and the constant. You have to see every term lower than whatever your highest degree term is. If you're missing an x squared term, then you have to put zero x squared as a placeholder, because there's not one, so we'll put a coefficient of zero, but you still have to see the x squared. You have to see every term. And the second note, uh, 
it gets a little cumbersome trying to think about who do I have to multiply by what to get a certain number and all that kind of stuff. Focus your attention to the leading term of the divisor as you're going through the long division process, which I'll illustrate here coming up in, in just a second. Okay, so here's our example that we're going to try. Let's take the big polynomial 2x cubed minus 5x plus 8 and divide it by x minus 3. All right, now this first term here, this is going to be the dividend. This is the larger polynomial that the little guy is being divided into. And the x minus 3 is the divisor. Okay, so we have the dividend and the divisor. So we're going to set these up. So it will look like this. We'll have x minus 3 on the outside. We'll have our division symbol, 2x cubed. Now, look at this term here. This is very, very important, 0x squared. Why do I have that term in there when it wasn't written in the original problem? Again, I needed placeholders. If I didn't have an x squared term, I have to have this term in here, minus 5x plus 8, which is the constant. Now, don't neglect uh, don't uh, don't um, neglect uh, paying attention to this placeholder here. If you just say, oh, well, that's probably not a big deal. We, we probably don't need to put that in there. You'll find out that it's very difficult to get the right answer because you won't have a place to put certain terms. So please listen to me when I say that we'll definitely need this placeholder here. All right, so let's play the game. Uh, what, what do we do? Well, we have to find something times x minus 3 that gets us close without going over to some other term. It gets a little confusing, doesn't it? Because we have all these different terms here. Well, this is where number two comes in. Focus your attention on the leading term of the divisor. You keep your eye on just the X right here and you, you should go through this with no trouble. So let, let's give this a shot. We're gonna, we're gonna say what times just the X, forget the three, what times just the x would give us 2x to the third? Think about that. What times x would give me this first term 2x to the third? Your answer should be 2x squared. So now where do I put the 2x squared? Well, I'm going to put it in the squared column. 2x squared. Okay, so you're going to have an x cubed column, an x squared column, an x and a constant column. Once we do that, what do we typically do? Well, then we'll take this term and multiply it times this uh, term here, this expression, and write the result down here. Now, remember, we're multiplying times the whole expression now, so we might have to distribute to the x and the 3. So let's do that. 2x squared times x would be 2x to the third. 2x squared times 3 would make minus 6x squared. Okay, so I did that product. Then we're going to draw a line and we're going to subtract. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we actually have to, to subtract both of these columns, the x cubed column and the x squared column. So if you take 2x to the third minus 2x to the third, they just cancel. And now this the second column here, different instructors teach this different ways. I'll tell you my personal preference, but then I'll show you what some other instructors also do. Um, I'll, I'll say it like this. I'll say 0x squared minus negative 6x squared because that's what we're doing. We're subtracting these two just like we subtracted the first two. But a minus a negative makes a plus, and so we'd really get 0 plus 6x squared, leaving us with 6x squared right here. Now, I hope I don't confuse you here, but let me show you what some instructors will do, and this is how they would teach this. They would say, because you're subtracting both this column and this column, what you can do is you can actually just distribute this guy through this term, and if that changes this to a plus, then you're just adding. To me, the, I, you, I see a lot more mistakes when you do it that way. I, I would prefer to, to stay away from doing it that way, where you actually carry the minus sign over and possibly change any signs and, and that sort of thing. I would much rather see just um, leaving them as they are and then just thinking about subtracting number A or term A minus term B. Anyways, um, next we'll drop down the minus 5x like so. 
then we'll play the game again. We'll say what again times just the x, just keep your eye on the leading term, would give you 6x squared. The answer is 6x. So we'll put plus 6x. 6x times x would give you 6x squared. 6x times negative 3 would make minus 18x. We'll draw our line, we'll subtract. 6x squared minus 6x squared cancels. And uh, me personally, I'm not going to just, you know, rewrite this minus sign over here and change that to a plus and that sort of thing, because then we're confused. Am I still subtracting or am, now am I adding or, you know, all those sorts of things. Um, so if your instructor does that, there's nothing wrong with that. You can get the right answer, um, I, I, you know, but I have to teach it one way or the other. So I'm just telling you my personal preference. So these will cancel negative 5x minus negative 18x, that'll actually make plus 18x. So negative 5x plus 18x will make 13x. And I haven't rewritten anything, so I, I know exactly what I have. Uh, I'll drop down the plus eight. And then let me change colors here one more time. And we'll play the game one last time. What times x gives, you, gives us 13x? The answer is 13. And then we'll have uh, 13 times x is 13x. And then 13 times negative 3 makes minus 39. We'll draw a line and we'll subtract. 13x minus 13x cancels. And 8 minus negative 39 makes 8 plus 39, which makes 47. So we have a quotient. of 2x squared plus 6x plus 13. Uh, we obviously have a divisor of x minus 3 and a dividend of 2x cubed minus 5x plus 8. We also have a remainder of 47. Okay, so we've done this long division problem here. This video is already getting pretty long. Uh, we do need to talk about how do you write your answer after doing long division, but I think I'll save that for another video because that's kind of a lengthy discussion in and of itself. But um, in some capacity, you're gonna use this quotient and this remainder. So if you wanna go and watch that video, we'll now talk about how you express your answer after you've used long di uh, division to divide one polynomial by another polynomial.